from the Lawrence Joel Coliseum in Winston-Salem, North Carolina. This is the ACC on ESPN. Tonight, it's the season opener down Tobacco Road as the UNC Asheville Bulldogs take on the Wake Forest Demon Deacons. And a pleasant good evening, everyone. Welcome to college basketball tonight on ESPN3. Brock Bowling along with Paul Biancardi. And Paul, the buzz around Winston-Salem today is the fact that tonight is the coaching debut of new head coach Danny Manning here at Wake Forest. Yeah, Danny Manning has said he wants to compete for championships and he wants to do so in an aggressive man-to-man -man defense and an up-tempo offense. He certainly has the pedigree to get the job done. Tonight's opponent, the UNC Asheville Bulldogs. They have a history of playing in the postseason and they'll be aiming for the upset tonight. Let's take a look at the one-on-one. -on -one. And for UNC Asheville, the Bulldogs are led by sharpshooting sophomore Andrew Rousey. The sensational sophomore Andrew Rousey, the Big South freshman of the year. In fact, he led the Big South in scoring at 20 points per game. He has the ultimate neon green light from Coach McDevitt. And on the Wake Forest side, Devin Thomas, a huge game last week, 12 of 12 shooting and a big double-double inside for the Demon Deacons. They'll be counting him all season long to score in the paint and rebound. One of the better players inside the paint in the ACC, a legitimate threat to post a double-double every night. He had 26 and 11 in their exhibition win. And let's take a look at the starting lineups for UNC Asheville. They go with Robertson, Rousey, we just talked about him, Little John, Zilly and Hughes, and for Wake Forest, Cody Miller McIntyre, Madison Jones, Greg McClinton, Devin Thomas, and the newcomer from Greece, Konstantinos Midiglu. And Danny Manning likes him, Paul. He's a good outside shooter, long range guy, good tall guy as well. Had a chance to watch him this afternoon at shoot around. Quick release, range and accuracy on that jump shot. He's gonna give the Demon Deacon some offense this year. Season opener for both teams, UNC Asheville and Wake Forest. Wake Forest coming off a 25-point win over Division II Young Harris back on last Friday night, 96-71. Demon Deacons in that game scored 76 points in the paint as compared to 36 points for Young Harris. And for UNC Asheville, it also won its exhibition opener against Brevard last Saturday night, 81 to 58. There is head coach Nick McDevitt in his second year as the head coach of the UNC Asheville Bulldogs. Played at UNCA from 97 to 2001. Longtime assistant coach for the club and now in his second year at the helm of UNC Asheville. And Danny Manning, we talked about him making his Wake Forest head coaching debut, his third season as a collegiate head coach. Coached at the University of Tulsa the last two seasons. Now in his first season at Wake Forest and a bit of a homecoming of sorts for Danny Manning grew up just 30 minutes down the road in Greensboro North Carolina and here he is coaching in his first game as the head man for Wake Forest Sam Hughes will jump up for UNC Asheville against Devin Thomas of Wake Forest and they have to redo the tip Brock two teams that want to play an up-tempo game they want to play fast but they don't want to shoot quick Toss in the tap, and they have to do it again. <laughs> Two mulligans, Two <laughs> to, mulligans. Be, to begin the season. Usually as a coach, you work on the jump ball, but I'm not sure the officials have worked on how to throw that ball up in the air. Got to get it a little higher. So there's an apex that the players can tip the ball. As Coach McDevitt did a great job in his first year, guided that program to a 10-6 and six record in the Big South. Here we go. And we are underway here in Winston-Salem, North Carolina, as Wake Forest went 17 and 16 a year ago, but just 6 and 12 in the ACC. Midiglu, the Greece native, making his debut as a Demon Deacon, up over the top on that shot, goes back over to UNCA. And that was a Greece lightning release, Brock. As soon as he caught the ball, he knew he was open, took a shot. Here's Andrew Rousey, averaged 20 points per game last year to lead the Big South Conference in second in the nation among freshmen last year in college basketball. Missed three by UNC Asheville. Here comes Wake Forest at the floor. McIntyre against Robertson, puts it up and in off the window, and Wake Forest is on the board first. McIntyre refused the ball screen, 
Drove it to the baseline. Nice finish by the thick, strong guard out of North Carolina. Here's Giacomo Zeli against Mideglu. There's the sharpshooter, Andrew Rousey, misfiring on that first shot and the rebound to Wake Forest. And here is Devin Thomas up front for Medivin Nikens. Thomas all the way inside, missed the shot, but he's fouled. He'll go to the line and shoot two. He had a double-double, 12 of 12 shooting last week in the exhibition game, 26 points and 11 rebounds against Young Harris. Watch Cody Miller McIntyre. Well, he drove it to the basket. This time it's Devin Thomas from the high post to the rim. Loves contact. As a matter of fact, he seeks it out on his way to the basket. One of the best inside players this year in the ACC. Thomas, a 53% free throw shooter a year ago, and gets his first point of the game. And Wake Forest lead is three. And that's a great point, Brock. Free throw shooting is not that good. His field goal percentage is 52. His free throw is 53. He's got to get that up into the 70s. And it's both of those, his first two points of the game, and it's 4 0. Wake Forest with the early lead on in state rival UNC Asheville. Now Danny Manning was a longtime assistant coach for Bill Self. You're going to see an aggressive quarter court man to man defense. It's going to try to stifle you one on one. Hughes forces the jumper, missed it inside, and loose ball foul called on UNC Asheville. It goes the other way. Uh, Corey Littlejohn, his first personal foul of the game. And the offense for Wake Forest will be a high-low offense that they ran to Kansas. Devin Thomas at the top, some side ball screen action. He's going to keep it simple, but he's paying attention to detail, Danny and Manning. Mediglu traveled inside of the baseline, tried to get by Giacomo Zilli of UNC Asheville. That's the first turnover on Wake Forest. Mediglu likes to face the basket inside, not really efficient with his back to the basket. He's going to be a good player here at Wake Forest. Here's Corey Littlejohn, considered the best defender for Asheville. Now launching a three from the outside. Crawls off that iron and the rebound controlled by Thomas for Wake Forest. Here's Miller McIntyre. Long jumper missing strong, but Zilly gets the rebound for UNC Asheville. Here's Rousey, catch and shoot three. That's well short, and Rousey 0 for 2 so far in this game. Rousey is going to continue to take his looks. If you're Wake Forest, you've got to find him early and often in conversion defense. We're gonna see a high-low set from UNC Asheville. They actually have the same type of offense Wake Forest does. So it'll be interesting to see how teams defend each other here tonight. You see Wake Forest picking up full court man-to-man, -man, sliding back into a stifling quarter court man-to-man. -man. Here's Little John, cross courts it in the corner to Hughes, open for three. Rebound to Miller McIntyre for Wake Forest. Hughes can make that shot. And Madison Jones fouled, a hand check foul on Andrew Rousey, star player for UNC Asheville. That's his first personal and the second on the team. For Asheville to have a chance at the upset tonight, Rousey has to be in the game. He cannot get in foul trouble. Little 2-3 zone on the baseline out of bounds from Asheville. Change it up from that man-to-man. -man. Let's see what Wake Forest does against the zone. McClinton from the elbow, and that crawls off. And the rebound to Jaleel Roberts, who's in the game for the first time for UNC Asheville, as well as David Robertson. He has the ball, number 13. Nice to see McClinton back in the game from an ACL surgery. Last year, he was a medical redshirt. And coming into the game for Wake Forest, perhaps the fan favorite, number 33 for Wake Forest, Aaron Roundtree the third. He provides a lot of energy. He'll replace number 11, Greg McClinton. It's a Wake Forest theme, team that'll go about 11 or 12 deep. And it's a junior-laden team. No seniors. This team is starting to blossom right now. Jeff Bezdelic left Danny Manning, a strong group in the junior class. 
Taylor McIntyre getting a screen from Darius Leonard who's in there. Cameron are making Cornelius Hudson for three. That's off the mark. Rebound Roundtree, and it's missed inside, and the rebound controlled by UNC Asheville. Rousey stumbles and gets it over to Little John, and the Bulldogs will reset the offense. Cornelius Hudson, 25 in the gold at 6-6. Danny Manning trying to put some length and athletic ability on Andrew Rousey. There's Danny Manning. Grew up in Greensboro, went to Page High School through his junior season. Led his team to the 1983 state championship. And then he spent his senior year in Lawrence, Kansas, followed his dad, Ed Manning, who went on to the coaching staff of Larry Brown at Kansas as Rousey knocks in his first jumper. And then a few years later, he and the Jayhawks win the national championship, Danny and the Miracles in 1988. Danny had 31 points in that game against Oklahoma. Major upset for the Jayhawks. Head coach Larry Brown gets his national championship with Danny Manning. Madison Jones driving inside, and he's fouled on the play by Sam Hughes of UNC Asheville. That's his first. Little ball screen action. Madison Jones attacks the rim, draws the contact, gets to the free throw line. And a timeout on the floor, 15-53. Remaining in the first half, and Wake Forest leads by a deuce. Four to two, Wake Forest leading in-state rival UNC Asheville. Early moments of the game and the season opener for both teams. There's Andrew Rousey who knocked in a jumper a moment ago to put Asheville on the board. Watch the way the Big South freshman of the year navigates in pick and roll. Freeze it right there. It was a ball screen. The hedge was late. He splits the defense. Now he rises up, let it go. Into a pull-up jump shot. He has time and space, knocks it down. Andrew Rousey, a sophomore from Lexington, Virginia, the Big South Freshman of the Year a year ago and first team all Big South, averaged 20.3 points per game. That led the Big South and was second best in the entire nation among freshmen last year. He's not just a shooter, Brock. He's a driver. He can make the pull-up jump shot. He's terrific in pick and rolls and away from the basketball as well. Very dangerous player. And Madison Jones goes to the line, misses that first free throw. Jones. 6'1", junior, only a 49% free throw shooter a year ago. So far 0 for 1 on this trip. Jones is the ultimate point guard out of Ravenscroft High School here in Raleigh, North Carolina. Played for head coach Kevin Billerman, former Division I head coach. Jones has to improve on his outside jump shot to help the Demon Deacons this year offensively. So Wake Forest by three, and here's Andrew Rousey directing traffic for UNC Asheville. Look at the spacing on the floor. 
four blues around one. Sam Hughes for three, and that's strong. And Mitchell Wilbekin, new guard into the game for Wake Forest, gets the rebound for the Deeks. Mitchell Wilbekin, the younger brother of Scotty Wilbekin, who played for the Florida Gators, led Florida to the Final Four last year. They look alike, don't they? Especially in the eyes. Miller McIntyre, nice fake inside, and he lays it in. And Miller McIntyre has his second field goal, his fourth point of the game. Love the pump fake by McIntyre. A strong body to finish. Growing up now as a junior. A five-point lead for Wake Forest. See how spread out UNC Asheville is. They want to space the floor, shoot threes, or drive it. Banada airballs the three, but standing out of bounds with the rebound was Hudson for Wake Forest. Turnover on Wake. It's third of the game. It'll stay with UNC Asheville. There's the jump shot. The air ball. Caught the rebound and air ball. Yep, his left foot was out of bounds. Good call by the official. And number four, Ken Ubaru. On the left wing into the game for the first time for UNCA. And Ubaru lost it off his fingertips out of bounds. Second turnover on the night for UNC Asheville. Talked to Coach McDevitt this afternoon. He said, for us to pull off the upset, we have to eliminate live ball turnovers. That was a dead ball turnover. When you have live ball turnovers, teams can run out and score quickly. They also have to limit the second chance points by the bigger Wake Forest team. Round tree. Lost it. Turnover number four on Wake. It's one thing Danny Manning talked about earlier today at shoot-around. His team needs to take better care of the basketball. He wasn't too impressed with the way they handled things against Young Harris at the exhibition last Friday, trying to clean things up here tonight. What a great shoot-around Danny Manning had. Oh, yeah. Attention to detail. He did some offense. He actually did the shell drill, which is a defensive 4-4 four four drill. A lot of shooting. Scouting report defense. He's the coach of the year in Conference USA last year. Little John, this is that jumper from the corner. Here comes Miller McIntyre for Wake, all the way inside, and he's fouled, and Miller McIntyre will go to the line and shoot two. That's his game, Cody Miller McIntyre. The ability to get to the rim, square up the defender, draw the contact, try to get the N1. He loves to drive, he loves to finish, he loves to drive, loves to find guys. He has to polish up that outside three-point shot. Right now, he's 25% from the three-point line, career-wise. So Miller McIntyre, 62% foul shooter last year, hits the first free throw. And now he has six points on the night. Wake Forest, five of six of the line, and the Deacons lead it by seven. When Miller McIntyre gets inside the arc, he can score or find guys. 17% from the three-point line last year in ACC play. He's got to spend a lot of time in the gym in this season right now. Hopefully he's done that in the offseason. Danny Manning says he's an exceptional, dynamic athlete, and he's been put into the pressure cooker ever since he got here, and he's handled it well. He really has. He's competitive, good leader, good player. And Rousey floats one in off the baseline by the right hand, and Rousey has his second field goal, his fourth point. It's so hard to find Rousey so quick. There's that high-low offense you talked about, Paul, but a nice steal and a turnover caused by Asheville. That's the fifth turnover on Wake. Kevin Veneta with that good weak side help defense. Steal by Mittaglou, the man from Greece, all the way, and he misses the jam, and it's rebounded by UNC Asheville. That might be on SportsCenter's not top 10 tonight. That might be on their bottom 10. <laughs> Had the steal, he acted like he couldn't decide whether to dunk it or lay it in, and he missed them both. <laughs> Danny's saying, you got to finish. What Danny's saying is, just get the two points. Dinos, just get the two points. A good defense by Mittaglou. He's not sure if he wants to dunk it or lay it in. The ball slips off his hand. He feels bad, but you guys got to get back on defense. It's just another possession in the game, good or bad. Hey, it's early, early in the season. Got a, not quite a mid-season for him. He's a freshman. He's just uh, getting the swing of things here. We've got to go to the next play. He played on the under-18 
national team in Greece. So right. he's, he's well seasoned in the game. He's just got to get stronger. Hudson for three. Knocks it in from downtown. His first points of the game. Staff is really high on 25 in the gold. Cornelius Hudson, 6'6 from Dallas. Played his AAU basketball for the Dallas Mustangs. And Wake Forest has opened up an eight point lead. Here is Vanada. Had his shot partially blocked away by Thomas for Wake and then taken right back by Rousey against Thomas. Misses the layup, but he's fouled and he'll go to the line and he'll shoot two. Andrew Rousey, not just a great offensive player, but anticipates well on defense. There's the block shot by Thomas, the kick out. It's sloppy, it's lazy. Rousey picks it off. Love the way he dips his shoulder in to get the contact. Put himself to the free throw line. This guy is a big time scoring guard. And Coach McDevitt really praised him earlier this week when we talked to him about Andrew Rousey, even though he averaged 20 points per game last year, the, he says he's a very unselfish player, always puts the team first, and like you said, not only excels at shooting the basketball from outside, but also wants to always improve his game, just a sophomore, he's got a good future. Wait till you see when he starts to utilize the shot fake. He loves the shot fake before he shoots the three-point shot. The ball screen continuity by Wake Forest. Mediglu draws the double team now to Overton and a hand check foul is called on Kevin Vanada of UNC Asheville and that's his first. UNC Asheville 17 and 15 a year ago went 10 and 6 to the Big South tied for second place in the league. Lost to Winthrop in the Big South tournament last year by one point 80 to 79. And they lost a lot. DJ Cunningham, Ron Lane. Devin Two fifth-year seniors that were really, really strong for UNC Asheville. And Devin Thomas gets his first field goal inside, his fourth point, and the Demon Deacons lead it by eight. That's Alec Woodnook, number two, first action of the night. Over to Robertson. Canada in the corner for three. That rims out, and McClinton corrals the rebound for Wake Forest. Mittaglou gets position inside on Giacomo Zilli and can't finish, but he's fouled, and he'll go to the line for two shots, so the first foul called on Giacomo Zilli. And a timeout taken on the floor, 11-21, remaining in the first half. It's all Wake Forest, Deeks by eight. Back in Winston-Salem, Dolores Joel Coliseum, Brock Bolding alongside Paul Biancardi, 14-6, Wake Forest by 8, 11 21 to go in the first half. And just a moment ago, Devin Thomas getting inside position and a basket for Wake Forest. Madison Jones with a good post feed, he gets down, 
Stop it right there. You see the angle Devin Thomas gets to the rim. The defender from Asheville goes for the gamble. Let it go. Thomas has a clear path to the rim. Great low post offense by Thomas. Getting the angle that he needs to get to the rim and score. And there is Devin Thomas, junior out of Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. He is the younger brother of Alyssa Thomas, who plays in the WNBA for the Connecticut Sun. This guy's just a productive post player. His game is at the free throw line, in the paint, and on the glass. So Midiglu at the line, fouled before the timeout, nails that free throw. Wake Forest, six of seven at the line tonight, and Midiglu has his first point. Watch his release, high, beautiful rotation. Nails both, and it's a 10-point lead, biggest lead of the night for Wake Forest. It's 16 to six. Robertson at the top for three, and he knocks it in from outside, and David Robertson has his first field goal, his first three points of the game. And on the other end, a basket, they wave it off, offensive foul, a charge on Cody Miller McIntyre, his first personal foul of the game, and they go back the other way. And that's where Cody Miller McIntyre has to utilize the jump stop and kick it out. As you get older, into the game, you gotta realize you can't always get to the rim. The floor shrinks. Use that jump stop for a jump shot or a kick out. Rousey has two guys on him. This is Jaleel Roberts. He finds Vanada and a checking foul called on Wake Forest. That's on Greg McClinton, the 6'7 redshirt freshman from right here in Winston-Salem, his first personal foul of the game. Greg McClinton won a state championship at Winston-Salem Prep with head coach Andre Gould. 2012, here's the shot fake by Rousey. Keep your eye on 15 in the blue, folks. He scores quick and in bunches. And an illegal screen, offensive foul called on Alec Wunuk for UNC Asheville. That's his first. But that's a dead ball turnover, Brock. Doesn't really hurt Asheville in terms of Wake Forest scoring and conversion. They get a chance to set their defense. Now, you don't want too many turnovers, but when you do, you want dead ball turnovers. Madison Jones all the way to the cup and lays it in off the window with the left hand. And Jones has his first field goal, third point of the game. You think with the defense set, they wouldn't give up a layup. <laughs> a nine-point Wake Forest lead. Vanada, tough shot on the baseline and banks it in. That's his first basket and first points as well tonight. Devin Thomas back inside. Nearly traveled, but turned it over anyway. That's already eight turnovers on Wake Forest. Rousey, nice play off the glass. And Rousey heating up. He has eight points in this first half. And the lead is cut to five. Wake Forest leads it 18 to 13. So far, the Deacons have led it the entire way early on. There's that high-low action. They're trying to get Thomas inside. Yeah, we, yeah, we saw the shoot around earlier today, and uh, it does look very Bill Self-like at Kansas, that high-low entry passing game. Well, at Kansas, they called it too high. Danny Manning calls it three high. But the ball comes from the high post to the low post. Shooters and guards spaced out behind the three-point line on the wings. If you can get Devin Thomas the basketball, if you can get him a touch, he can produce. And cans the free throw. He has now five points in the game. You know, in that game against Young Harris, Paul, last week in the exhibition game, We've mentioned it, 12 of 12 shooting, 26 points, 11 rebounds. He also had four blocks, so he was doing it on both ends of the floor. Had a consistent game all around. He's really not a shot blocker, but against that type of competition, he can get those. He's more of a positional defender. He moves his feet, uses that strong chest, strong lower base in the low post.
Rousey rises and fires from just outside the foul line, and Thomas, the rebound for Wake Forest, and then turns it over. Rousey gets it back. Floats one up in the lane, and it goes in. He can shoot from outside and drops in the teardrop from the foul line area. He's got all the tricks in his bag, 15 in the blue. <laughs> Andrew Rousey, the big south, freshman of the year. How about that runner? He already has 10 points in this game. And it's 19-15, Wake Forest's lead is cut to four. And now it's up to seven again as Darius Leonard from outside bangs in a three, his first points of the night. The 50th transfer from Campbell University. That's why he came here, to make outside shots. Very good off the catch, yep. knocking it down. Leonard started at Kent State, then transferred to Campbell, played there two years, graduated, and then transferred over to Wake Forest for his fifth and final season as a college basketball player, third school in five years. As Venata is fouled on the rebound try for UNC Asheville as coming into the ball game is Corey Littlejohn. He'll take the place of Andrew Rousey. What? You see man to man out of bounds by Wake Forest. You won't see much if any zone by Danny Manning. Steal by Darius Leonard, and then he throws it away. That's 10 turnovers on Wake Forest. And they've been really sloppy tonight on the outlet pass. They're very careless, doing a good job getting the defensive rebound, but their outlet passes are sloppy. The outlet man is going down the floor, not coming back to the basketball, and the passer is not looking at who he's throwing it to. He's just throwing it ahead. UNC Asheville sticking their nose in there making the steals. Here's Jaleel Roberts, had the ball stripped away. Seven turnovers on UNC Asheville. And there now it is another again. one by Wake. Little John for three, that's short. And this is what Danny Manning's gonna show them on the film tomorrow. Once you secure the basketball, you have to make a safe pass. Hudson, the inside pass to Devin Thomas, and he's triple teamed. Great Open kick is out. Jones for three. Great kick out by Thomas. And the rebound defensively picked up by Asheville and Kevin Vanetta. Asheville hanging around, only down seven with 7.23 to go in the opening half. You know, Madison Jones is going to get that shot all year long. He's got to make it. Air ball by Roberts. The miss on the putback by Neely. And here comes Thomas for Wake. A collision inside, and they call a blocking foul on UNC Asheville and David Robertson of the Bulldogs. That's his first personal and a timeout on the floor with 7.08 remaining in the first half. Wake Forest leading Asheville by seven. Back in Winston-Salem, 7.08 to go in the opening half, and Wake Forest leads UNC Asheville by seven. And how about Andrew Rousey, Paul? He has figured out ways to score inside and out for Asheville. Look at the shot fake and the step through. That's just a high basketball IQ. And right here, 
in control, sees the defender coming, shoots that floater off of one foot. Now look at this. I'm telling you what, fellas. That's pretty black and white, Brock. <laughs> That's a charge. But An Andrew Rousey, 10 points in 12 minutes. He doesn't take what the defense gives him. He creates shots on his own. If he finds a little bit of time and a little bit of space, he can figure out how to get a shot off. And Wake Forest, so far in this game, has six made field goals in the game, but it has 11 turnovers. It has nearly as many turnovers as it has made field goals so far in the first half. And I would say three-quarter of those turnovers came on outlet passes. Just sloppy from the time they get the rebound to the throw-ahead pass. You know, passing and catching is a skill. You have to communicate, you have to look at each other. The outlet man has to come back to the ball, and the outlet passer has to make sure that his man is open. And there's head coach Nick McDevitt of UNC Asheville. And you tell, tell you what, a guy that's been true to his school, loyal to his university, grew up just outside of Asheville, Asheville about 30 minutes away. Played at UNC Asheville from 1997 to 2001. Assistant coach at UNC Asheville right after college from 01 to 11. The associate head coach for two years from 11 to 13. And now in his second season as the head man at his alma mater. He's like Jim Beheim. <laughs> but younger. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I've watched Coach McDevitt on the road recruiting for a long time. I have a lot of respect for him. I think he's one of the bright young head coaches in the college game. I really do. I love the way he runs practice. I love his philosophy. And he keeps it simple. Makes one out of two, does Thomas. 23-15, Wake with the lead. And just like that, Marcus Neely from the foul line knocks in a 15-footer, his first two points of the night. You know, Coach McDevitt gave me a phrase yesterday. He says, we're going to play fast, but we're not going to shoot quick. <laughs> and I thought that was really smart. He wants his guys to move the ball, run the floor, but don't take bad shots. It's a high-low lob inside from Overton to Thomas, and he scores. Well, he's got to get some more pressure on the basketball. You know that Wake Forest is trying to punch it inside. You got to pressure the ball, then get that weak side help. And Rousey knocks in another three. Rousey, that's actually his first three of the night. He has 13 points. That's his first tray, and it's down to an eight-point game. When you see all of Rousey's baskets, he doesn't have a defender on him. Wake Forest needs to get on him closer so he feels the defender. And Miller McIntyre faked out Rousey on the jumper, but he leaves it short. Rousey inside, the floater again, count it, and one, and he'll go to the line for a three-point opportunity. He has 15 points in the first half alone. Once he's behind the line, the defense gets up tight, the swipe, the step through. The early weak side help was late, and it never got there. He has 15 of Asheville's 22 points so far in the first half. You got to stay close and connected to this young man and cannot go for his shot fix. And you must stay between him and the basket. Make him shoot the ball over you each and every time. Easier said than done. And all of a sudden, Wake's lead is cut to two. And another turnover, number 12 in the first half by Wake. Looked like a blocked shot by Corey Littlejohn. Neely, blocked by Thomas, taken by Overton. And then Thomas has it off his fingertips out of bounds. Turnover number 13 on Wake Forest to the first half with 5.23 to go. There's another example of a costly and casual turnover by Wake Forest. It's given Asheville a chance to take the lead right here it was a 10-point game it's 16 to 6 and it's early in the season new head coach with a new team Danny Manning will work out the kinks correction it was 18 to 8 moments ago and Robertson 
Knocks it off of Mitchell Wilbekin's hip out of bounds. It'll stay with Asheville, 15 to shoot. Outstanding defense by Wilbekin. Moving his feet, showing his hands. Mitchell Wilbekin. He originally signed his national letter of intent with Tulsa and Danny Manning last year, and then came to Wake Forest with Danny Manning after Danny took the head coaching job here at Wake. Rousey misses on that three, and here come the Demon Deeks. Overton tries to get it inside to Thomas, and a reach-in holding foul is called on, looks like Marcus Neely of UNC Asheville. That's his first personal. That was almost a turnover as Overton threw the, Overton, watch right here, he throws the ball to where the defender is, okay, on the top side. If not for the use of the body of Devin Thomas moving his feet, that would have been a steal by Asheville. Instead, it's a foul because Devin Thomas moves his feet in the post and has a strong, thick lower base. Thomas has nine points now, and Wake Forest is 10 of 13 from the line. He's a hard guy to defend inside. If you front him, they will lob it over. I think you gotta play behind him with a taller guy, but Asheville doesn't have a lot of height. So Asheville with a chance to tie with a three or cut it to one with a deuce, and Kim Ubaru misses the reverse layup inside, and here comes Overton for Wake Forest. Pulls up for three and knocks it in. That's his first points of the night for the sophomore from Philadelphia and extends the lead for Wake Forest to six. His dad was a heck of a player, Doug Overton at LaSalle. In a long time NBA career. Good pedigree. Robertson for three. Crawls off the rim and a loose ball foul called on Overton for Wake Forest. And that's why he was recruited here by the previous staff. Jeff Battle, associate head coach, recruited him. Brought him in to make shots, and that's what he can do. Stationary shooter with a high basketball IQ. So bonus free throws for UNC Asheville. Marcus Neely at the line. Redshirt sophomore, redshirted last year due to, due to a knee injury he sustained back in the summer of 2013. And Midiglu, the big fella, number 44, comes in for Wake Forest. He'll replace Roundtree. At the line is Marcus Neely out of Fort Lauderdale, Florida. It's the first half of the one and one. He'll get the bonus. Asheville is a perfect four of four at the line so far. They don't have the size to get a lot on the inside. They're going to get there. They're going to create fouls by driving to the basket, spreading the floor out against Wake Forest. In league play, they'll be able to post feed a lot more and a lot better. It's Wake Forest by five inside of four minutes to go in the first half. To get it inside to Thomas, double teamed and lays it in anyway. Uh, he's just a horse inside. Asheville has to have a little bit more ball pressure when the ball's on the wing. You got to know they're looking for Thomas inside. He's in double figures with 11, and the lead is seven for Wake Forest. I mean, he went through two guys, Brock, to get that basket. Neely for three. That's too strong, and Midiglu claims the rebound for Wake. Up the floor to Thomas, throws it down with two hands. And to Coach McDevitt, you don't want any momentum changing plays. As Thomas throws it down for a deuce and a dunk and extends the lead to nine at 33 to 24. And that might get the crowd going here on opening night of basketball here in Winston-Salem. Anytime the home team gets a dunk, it's a momentum changing play. That time they connected on the outlet pass and down the floor, Asheville was jogging back on defense. Nobody stopped the ball, nobody protected the basket, and an easy basket by Wake Forest. I tell you what, these fans have been waiting seven months for the Danny Manning era to begin. So much excitement when Danny Manning got the job in April of this year. And He's trying to revive the Wake Forest program, which has been a bit of a disappointment the last few years. And this is the bread and butter for Wake Forest. Devin Thomas inside, no ball pressure. 
has tremendous hands to catch the ball, good footwork and a wide body to finish. Rousey gives it up. He's got the hot hand with 16 points already in the first half. And you got to feel if he's on the floor, he's within range of his shot. And there's a shot inside as he knocks in the teardrop inside the lane. They just had five guys behind the three-point line, Asheville, trying to create an open shot. Madison Jones fouled inside by UNC Asheville. And how about Andrew Rousey, 18 points already in the first half. He averaged 20 points per game last year. Timeout taken, and we'll be back. Back in Winston-Salem, North Carolina, the Joel Coliseum, Brock Bowling alongside Paul Biancardi. Opening night of college basketball throughout the nation, and Wake Forest has a seven-point lead at home over intrastate rival UNC Asheville, 33-26. to 2.51 to go in this first half, and turnover is the story for Wake Forest, Paul. So far, turnover-wise, Wake Forest has 13 in the first half and only 10 made field goals. And for Asheville, it's Andrew Rousey keeping them in the game so far. 18 first half points, 18 of the team's 26. Well, Wake Forest has made up for the turnovers at the free throw line. They're 10 for 14 from the stripe. Really, both teams right now not shooting great from the three-point line at all. Wake Forest, actually, I'm sorry, three for six, they're very good. Asheville only 12%, two for 16. They can't live and die with that three-point shot. They've got to continue to spread the floor and look for the drive. And Jones misses the free throw. He was a 49% free throw shooter a year ago. Wake Forest now 10 of 15 at the line of this game and working on a seven-point lead. This was not a strong free throw shooting team last year, Wake Forest. Nor were they a good outside shooting team. Yeah, Wake Forest last year shot 45% overall from the floor and 33% from three point range. But Jeff Bezdelic and his staff, they made progress. They just didn't make enough and they didn't make it fast Four. enough. And Little John with an awkward acrobatic shot in the lane. He gets his first two points of the night, and the lead is cut down to six at 34-28. Little ball screen into the high-low. See, Devin Thomas, he doesn't even have to have the basketball to create a foul. Just by posting up hard, moving your feet, showing your hands, the defense will follow you. Fouls on Kim Ubaru for UNC Asheville. That's his second. And Thomas goes to the line again. 13 points so far in this game. And Thomas will do this not just against Young Harris or UNC Asheville. He'll do this in the ACC. He's a tough cover in the post one-on-one. -on -one. And 
Danny Manning says he's a high energy guy, thrives in the post, has good footwork, and that's a good compliment coming from Danny Manning. He's, he was one of the best at footwork and post moves in the paint and speaks highly of Devin Thomas. This is that second free throw. Wake leads it by seven, approaching two minutes to go in the first half. Little John needs help. Finds Panetta for three. And he leaves it short, and Thomas there again for the rebound for Wake Forest. And Wake Forest doing a nice job on the defensive glass. The, pro the problem has been on the outlet. Mitchell will begin, open for three, and that rims out. Rebound skied for and taken away by Jaleel Roberts of UNC Asheville. Yubaru muscles it up inside, and he's fouled, and he's going to the line to shoot two. There's so much attention on Andrew Rousey. When he has the basketball, he attracts defenders. One, two. The help is looking at him. Look at Hudson. It allows his teammate to be open. Might have traveled on that little move to the basket. But nevertheless, Rousey can make the assist. So Yubaru gets his first point of the night. He's a 6'6 freshman from Sugarland, Texas, just outside of Houston. Comes from the ever popular Oak Hill Academy High School in Virginia. UNC Asheville, six of seven at the line, and they're hanging around, trailing only by five to Wake Forest, 35-30. Approaching one minute, remaining in the first half. Mittiglou almost lost it, but got it back to a teammate, and here's Hudson for three. Mittiglou the rebound, and he's fouled on the follow-up attempt. He'll go to the line and shoot two. Nice hustle by the young man from Greece. Mittiglou, he's at the top of the key, comes flying in for this rebound. Shows you what great hands he has. Grabbed it with one, squeezed it with two, went up strong to draw the contact. And rattles home that free throw. Wake Forest has already gone to the line 19 times in this first half, and all four of Mittiglou's points have come at the charity strike. Yeah, that's the emphasis for Danny Manning in the high-low offense. To get into the paint, via the drive or the post up. I love this young man's stroke, whether it's from the foul line or the three point line. Mittiglou has a beautiful stroke. Wake by seven and inside of a minute to go in the first half. Winook driving inside, had it blocked away and here comes Wake on a three on three. Wilbekin, no foul called, had the ball stripped away out of bounds but Wake will retain it with 41 seconds to go in the first half. Clearly, Wake Forest wants to play up-tempo. Devin Thomas with the basketball in the open floor. Nice bounce pass to Wilberton, but great hustle by UNC Asheville to get back. Coach McDevitt now going to the 2-3 zone, trying to slow down Wake Forest here, change the rhythm of this possession as we end the half. So 19 on the shot clock, 28.8 to go on the first half game clock, and a timeout taken by Danny Manning and Wake Forest with 28.8 seconds remaining in the first half. I like that timeout by Danny Manning. In fact, you have to use your timeout in the first half that you get or you lose it. Danny Manning right now can draw up a play against zone if Asheville stays in the zone, or he can call a man-to-man -man play. Right now he can call two plays in the huddle and regardless of what UNC Asheville does defensively, Wake Forest should be ready. Last year, Danny Manning coached at Tulsa. His team started out four and nine, Paul, and then they went 17 and four the rest of the way to go to 21 and 13 on the season, and he was the coach of the year in Conference USA. They won the regular season and the conference tournament championships, and I asked him, what adjustments, what changes did you make 
from going from four and nine to 17 and four the rest of the way. And he said, we didn't change a thing. We didn't adjust a thing. We just believed in the system, believed in my system. I instilled in these guys. And he said, they just bought in, stopped turning the ball over, played more together, less unselfishly, and they made the tournament. You know, most times as a coach, you don't change things. You just continue to refine your system. You know, being around Bill Self for all those years pays off. And another turnover on Wake. That's number 14 in the first half, and UNC Asheville has a chance to cut into the lead some more before the halftime intermission, 15.7 seconds remaining. And that will be the first topic of conversation in the Wake Forest locker room, how to cut down and eliminate careless turnovers because they're unforced. Inside of 10 seconds, backdoor pass to Rousey. And he scores again, Andrew Rousey, 20 points in the first half. He averaged 20 points a game his freshman season, and he has 20 points at intermission, 20 of the UNC Asheville, 32 in the first 20 minutes of the game. As halftime is here in Winston-Salem, season opener for both teams, it's Wake Forest 37 and UNC Asheville 32 on ESPN3. Back at the Lawrence Joel Coliseum, Winston-Salem, North Carolina. Halftime, it's Wake Forest leading intrastate rival UNC Asheville by five, 37 to 32. Brock Bowling alongside Paul Biancardi, opening night of college basketball throughout the nation, including right here in Tobacco Road, Winston-Salem, North Carolina. And Wake Forest letting UNC Asheville hang in there. And here are the first half highlights for UNCA. The well, last year's leading scorer of the Big South, Andrew Rousey, you see him back cut, lay up the smallest guy on the floor. There's the runner. Great timing, knowing when the defense is coming at him. There's the block by Wake Forest. 
One of their runouts inside to Devin Thomas. He makes and maintains contact, goes up strong. He's been a horse inside for Wake Forest. And this Thomas running the floor, getting an easy two points. He has 14 points in seven minutes, nine rebounds, already almost a double-double. He is the double-double man, and like you said, getting close to one here tonight. Halftime score, 37-32. Wake Forest leading UNC Asheville. You're watching college basketball right here on ESPN3.com. Halftime score in Winston-Salem. It's Wake Forest 37 and UNC Asheville 32 at the break as we welcome you into the broadcast booth here in Winston-Salem at the Lawrence Joel Coliseum, Brock Bowling, along with Diane Daly, the, new, the uh, head golf coach here at Wake Forest University. And uh, first of all, talk about your season this past fall. You had a successful season, uh, one of the best since 2011. That's right. We, uh, we played very well. Uh, one of our goals at the beginning of the year was to be in the contention going into the last day. And we were in the last pairing, all four events that we played in, and we ended up winning at Landfall, uh, which was our final event, and beat uh, five teams ranked in the top ten, including the number one team in the country. So it was a fun, fun, fun fall for us. I talk about some of the uh, veteran players you have on the golf team and some newcomers, and uh, what are your expectations of them this coming spring? Well, um, we're led by two um, outstanding young ladies, uh, Allison Emery, who is a senior. And, um, and Sierra Sims, who's a sophomore, and both of them are shooting uh, par or better every time they go out and play. And we have a, a very deep uh, group this year with um, five students under, uh, averaging under 74. So we're excited. They were very excited about how they played this, uh, this fall. We're just trying to stay with what we do every day and, um, and see what happens and see if the results will take care of themselves. And uh, Wake Forest just recently broke ground on the new Haddock House. Uh, talk about what that is and how it's going to benefit your program, you think, in the future. Oh, the Haddock Center is going to be just phenomenal for our program. It, we're going to have uh, locker rooms for our teams for the first time. We're going to have a team room where they, we can have meetings and the teams can relax, both the men's and women's teams. For the first time, our, our coaching staffs will be under one roof. Um, we'll have a heritage room to display the rich tradition of uh, Wake Forest golf. So I think it's going to be a real showcase uh, facility for us, and it's going to be right at our golf facility uh, on campus, our practice facility, which is very, very nice. All right, well, thank you for joining us here at halftime, and uh, best of luck this coming spring in the golf season. Thanks so much. Thanks for having me. You're welcome. That is uh, Diane Daly, head golf coach of the Wake Forest Demon Deacons. As uh, we're at halftime here in Winston-Salem, 37-32, Wake Forest leads it at the break.
Back in Winston-Salem, North Carolina, the Lawrence Joel Coliseum halftime score. Wake Forest 37 and UNC Asheville 32. It's uh, been a back and forth battle, but Wake Forest has led the entire way, leading by as many as 10 and UNC Asheville hanging in there thanks to Andrew Rousey, 20 of the team's 32 points in the first half of play. As we take a look at the first half highlights, or first half stats, I should say, of this game, and uh, field goal wise, Wake Forest shooting just under 50%, UNC Asheville not quite as well. Neither team lighting it up from three point range. You see the turnovers there for Wake Forest fall 14 to seven, but how about the rebounds? Wake Forest up 10 on that. Yeah, I'm impressed with the job that Wake Forest is doing on the backboard, especially the defensive glass. Danny told me they were gonna commit to that this year. Not impressed with the turnovers. That's something though that can be cleaned up because a lot of those turnovers, Brock, were on the outlet pass. Just a little too excited, a little too antsy to get down the floor and play that up-tempo basketball that Danny Manning wants. He'll clean that up in the film session. 14 turnovers for Wake and only 10 made baskets so far in the first half. And for UNC Asheville, Andrew Rousey, 20 first half points. 20 of his team's 32. Can he keep it up in the second half? We will find out when we come back. Halftime score from the Lawrence Joel Coliseum, 37-32, Wake Forest in the lead by five. Thirty-seven, thirty-two. Wake Forest hanging in, hanging in there, leading by five at home on opening night of basketball at the Lawrence Joel Coliseum here in Winston-Salem, North Carolina. Brock Bowling alongside Paul Biancardi, and, and Paul, you're the recruiting expert for ESPN when it comes <laughs> down to high school recruits, college basketball, and uh, let's take a look at your rankings for the recruiting class of 2015. Well, Florida State right now stands at number five. They have an outstanding athletic class. This may be the best class Leonard Hamilton has brought in. Louisville, Rick Patino continues to bring athletes into his program. And you see Syracuse at number seven. They have an outstanding shooter coming in by the name of Malachi Richardson. Jim Beheim's class, long and athletic. It fits that 2-3 zone so well. And then Wake Forest at number 17. Danny Manning getting it done on the recruiting trail in his first full class. Also, you don't see Duke in there, but they have an outstanding two-man class. Chase Jeter on the inside, Luke Kennard on the outside. You know, some teams rebuild, Duke reloads. And Kentucky reloads as well. And uh, before we get to next season for Kentucky, about this season, SMU coach Larry Brown was quoted as saying that he thinks that 
John Calipari and Kentucky can run the table and go 40 and 0 this year. You buy it? I'm buying. Oh, uh, no, I'm sorry. I'm not buying 40 and 0. National championship, I'll buy. 40 and 0, I'm not going to buy anybody. College basketball, regardless of who says what, there's parity amongst the best 10 or 12 teams in the country. I don't see anybody, anybody running the table. There's Danny Manning, who played for Coach Larry Brown in both college and the pros. He played for him at Kansas for four years and also played for him for a couple of seasons with the L.A. Clippers back in the early 90s. Those were the bad days of the Clippers back in the 90s. Yeah, now the Clippers are good and the Lakers are awful. There you go. Doc Rivers doing an <laughs> outstanding job. Former Boston Celtic head coach. There's a turnover on UNC Asheville to begin the second half. Number eight in the game for the Bulldogs. But again, that was a dead ball turnover. Wake Forest could not get out and run on that. Asheville gets a chance to set their defense. So now Wake Forest trying to extend its lead of five and trying to take better care of the basketball. 14 turnovers the Demon Deacons had in the first half. Mittaglue inside, fouled late on the shot. And Mittaglue will go to the line and shoot two. He has four points, all coming from the free throw line. Well, Devin Thomas makes this happen. Look at the hands to catch. Reads the double team, understands it's coming from the other big, looks, locates, and finds his teammate. I mean, you can run offense to Devin Thomas, and you can run it through him as he's an outstanding passer as well as inside scorer. Well, Danny Manning feels Mittaglue's going to be really good, hopefully sooner rather than later as he misses that foul shot. And UNCA gets the rebound. He says that Mittaglue has a different mindset than most American players do. He's from Greece, you know, and already has a pro mentality playing over at the Greece team, the under 18 national team this past year. Yeah, Mittaglue has to catch up to the speed of the American game. There's a turnover, number 15 on Wake, and a reach-in foul on Mittaglou. That's his second of the night. And that's just a rookie mistake. You make a bad pass, you compound the mistake by creating a foul at half court. No reason to do that. Danny Manning's going to explain that to him right now. And see, that's teaching right there. There's coaching, and then there's teaching, and that was a teaching moment for Mittaglou. But Danny Manning's going to use him facing the basket, and playing off of Devin Thomas. Giacomo Zilli gets inside, three for the layup, and he has his first two points of the night. And UNC Asheville hanging around. It's cut it down now to a four-point game. Thomas inside, dips it under, count it, and one. And he'll go to the line for one more. Thomas now with 16 points in the game. When we talk about high-low, we talk about the pass from the high coming from the top of the key right there. That's a high-low pass. The help defensive is late. Devin Thomas does a great job of making and maintaining contact in the low post against his defender, just wheels to the basket. And completes the three-point play, and Thomas has 17 points in this game. He had 14 in the first half, and the lead is seven for Wake Forest at 41-34. Asheville's going to have to decide how they're going to play Thomas from this point on. Can't be one on one anymore. That when, ball deflected out of bounds off of Wake. And when you double team Thomas, what does he do? He finds the open guy. So you're going to have to change where the help comes from. Hughes down low to Roberts, and Janil Roberts has it stripped away by McClinton of Wake Forest. Miller McIntyre missing the floater, but Wake gets the offensive rebound. Great tip by Greg McClinton to keep that ball alive. Roundtree, baseline shot, no. Rebound by Sam Hughes of UNC Asheville. Rousey against Jones, and Jones has to stay right on him. He's lit up the Deepkins for 20 points already in the first 20 minutes. And he finds the open man. Hughes for three, bangs it in from outside, and Hughes has his first three points of the game in a standable four-point ball game. Wake Forest leads it 41-37. And a timeout taken by Danny Manning and Wake Forest with 17.47 to go.
41-37. Wake Forest's lead has come down to four, and Paul Andrew Rousey not only doing the damage for UNC Asheville shooting the basketball, but also finding the open man. A little dribble handoff with Sam Hughes. Soft trap by Wake Forest. Rousey breaks the trap and the kickback. Not only can he score buckets, but he can make assist. Might as well let him coach the team, Brock. <laughs> I mean, really, he's special. He's done everything for that except drive the team bus over from Asheville two hours away over to Winston-Salem. What he does is put pressure on a defense because you have to guard him behind the three-point line. Then he's quick enough, clever enough, and strong enough to get inside to the paint. He has a quick runner, a floater, and then if he sees too many defenders, does a great job of finding his open teammate. Well, Coach McDevitt of UNC Asheville told us that he is the ultimate team player, even though he averages 20 points a game like he did last year. Always looks for the open man. Very team-minded, team-first-minded and oriented type of guy. Loves to improve his game in all aspects. Here's Miller McIntyre getting free inside and lays it in. Nice little screen, the screener action by Wake Forest. McIntyre with the drive. That's what he does best. That's his eighth point of the night, and the lead is six for Wake Forest, and a hedging foul called on Wake on Aaron Roundtree. That's his first foul of the game. See, you see Rousey with a sloppy closeout. You don't need a closeout on Miller McIntyre. You can have what they call a short closeout and dare him to shoot the ball. When you run at him, he's going to drive right past you. There's that little harder hedge that time off the handoff. Good job by Wake Forest on that possession. Didn't let him out. Little John into Hughes, up and under move, and he got fouled on the way up, and he'll go to the line and shoot two. I think it's on, no, it's on uh, Devin Thomas. I thought it was on Madison Jones. It's on Devin Thomas. That's his second. Well, here's something else Andrew Rousey does. He creates space on the floor. There's so much attention given to him. The other players have a chance to drive the basketball and hit the glass. Sam Hughes, we saw him make the three-point shot from the corner a second ago. Now inside, stretch four man. Good size to finish inside. Puts in the free throw, his fourth point of the game. UNC Asheville, seven of eight at the line. It's down to a five-point game, 43-38. Last year, Sam Hughes, eight points a game for UNC Asheville. Right there, 31 in the blue. Expect him to get double figures this year for Coach McDevitt. Makes them both. He has five points. The lead is four for Wake Forest inside of 17 minutes remaining in the game. I'm really impressed with the spacing of Asheville. They're really hard to guard. They have good discipline and organization on offense. And a steal by Rousey. Ahead of the pack against Darius Leonard. Finds the trailer, Little John, who scores. Somebody calls Sports Center top 10. <laughs> Floaters, runners, three point shots. Pass behind his head. That's 15 turnovers on Wake Forest, and Andrew Rousey getting it done, scoring, passing, and the steal, and then finding the trailer on the break, Little John for the layup to cut it down to a two-point game. Now you got to drive it, Rousey, right now. Make him play defense. He loves to gamble. Get that ball to Madison Jones and make him drive on Rousey. Hudson inside, out of control with the banker, but. Leonard gets the offensive rebound for Wake Forest. Miller McIntyre collision. They wave off the shot, a blocking foul on Sam Hughes of UNC Asheville. That's his third, and we have a timeout on the floor. 15-53 remaining in the game. Opening night of college basketball. Wake Forest leads it by two at home.
Wake Forest hanging on, leading by two at home. An opening night of college basketball inside 16 minutes to go in this ball game tonight, Paul. And the best player on the night by far in this game is Andrew Rousey of UNC Asheville, scoring, passing, and defending as well. The right here does a nice job of rotating. He pushes it. You see him look for his teammate as he's going to the basket. Lays it up. Andrew Rousey creates baskets for himself and he creates opportunities for his teammates. He averaged three and a half assists last year in the Big South. I love his vision and his willingness to give it up to his teammates. And he's a competitive guy. You talked to him before the game. He was right there in the corner standing next to you, and you said, can you make this shot? Show me. Show me Show me you can make this shot. And he's like, Without oh, hesitation, he said, yeah. I said, what do you got tonight? Andrew Rousey goes, I got buckets, coach. And he's getting them. I like this move by Coach McDevitt, the zone. Maybe it can eliminate the touches by Devin Thomas. You can play an active, aggressive zone and keep the ball out of the paint. Thomas, nice. Cross court bounce pass to Hudson. He finds Leonard down low, and that's an air ball. Might have been partially blocked, and it's controlled by UNC Asheville. Yeah, I love the play, the defense by Coach McDevitt to change it out of the timeout. Robertson double teamed and finds Wanook. Wanook, the floater in the lane. That's too strong, and the rebound corralled out of the air by Leonard of Wake Forest. That's a good look at the basket. Anytime you get into the paint, you got to try to look to score first, kick it second. The immediate double on Thomas. Gets around it anyway, misses the inside layup. Offensive rebound, Leonard, and he's fouled from underneath. Well, Asheville had the double early that time. Thomas does a great job of spinning baseline. And then nobody on the defensive glass for Asheville. When you make that double, you have to be foot to foot with your teammate. You cannot allow any space for the offensive player to spin either middle or baseline. In fact, the defender on Thomas should have shaded the baseline and make him spin middle. Wake Forest now 16 of 24 at the line. Demon Deacons have led the entire way, hanging on to a two-point lead here in the second half. And Leonard makes one out of two. Leonard has his fourth point of the game. Three schools in five years for Leonard. Started out at Kent State, transferred to Campbell, graduate transfer now to Wake Forest. Good addition by Wake Forest. The guy with some size, make outside shots, and hopefully help them on the glass. Here's Rousey, double team, forces up that shot. To a nook in the corner. He got a little too deep that time, Rousey. Look at the spacing, four blue shirts. Now three at the top of the key by half court. Little dribble handoff weave. Work shot clock and spread out the Demon Deacon. Shot clock at five. Robertson had it stripped and taken away by Wake. Ten turnovers on Asheville. Thomas all the way, had it blocked away from behind by Asheville, but Miller McIntyre gets it back. A foul inside, away from the basketball. It's on Jaleel Roberts of Asheville. That's his first. This Thomas going to the basket. Great hustle by Roberts. Contest the challenge at the rim. But they don't pick up the loose ball. You hear coaches talk all the time, that 50-50 ball. And Mittaglou with the fadeaway jumper. He drops in his first field goal of the night, and that's his seventh point of the game. Well, as teams get to know Mittaglou, they're not going to give him any space to score. He's got a beautiful touch. And Rousey nearly makes the floater out of control. Loose ball. Mittaglou had it. And it's puffed around like a volleyball, picked up by Miller McIntyre for Wake. All the way inside, no, they call a foul on the floor before the shot, it's on Asheville. Foul on the floor on UNCA. What a great play by Miller McIntyre to come back to the basketball like a wide receiver and just catch it in the air, snatch it. He knows right what to do with it, right to the rim. Anytime you have the defense 
out of position and conversion. You want to attack. And a foul away from the basketball. I think it's on Alec Winook. It's his third personal foul, seventh team foul, and Wake Forest will go to the line for one and one. Now Asheville has to be careful because the game is starting to just slowly get away from them. Looks like Wake Forest, their size and athletic ability may be wearing down the smaller Bulldogs. And this is a young team, the Bulldogs. Nine of the 13 scholarship players for Asheville are freshmen and sophomores. Yeah, and 12 overall players are freshmen and sophomores, and even their upperclassmen are inexperienced in terms of minutes and games played. But this is a young team, Asheville, but an exciting team. And with a player like Andrew Rousey, you have a chance to win any game and a big game. They're going to have a very good season in the Big South. I look for Coastal Carolina, Radford, Big South, neck and neck with Asheville and Withrop right behind them. Well, you talk about the Big South. UNC Asheville has dominated that league. It has the best team record in conference play the last seven years. And Rousey hits another three from outside. He has 23 points in the game. His second tray, his first points of the second half. See, Wake Forest cut him off that time. And anytime you cut off a great offensive player, he's going to spin back to the open floor. Madison Jones all the way to the cup, and he got found hard from behind. He'll go to the line and shoot two. Appears to be OK. How about this three by Andrew Rousey for UNCA? Watch. They cut him off, spins back. He's got a nasty step back. You've got to make him use that ball screen. You can't give him the choice to go either way. You have to put him in the ball screen, and then defensively, the big man, you got a hard hedge just to slow him down and back him up. And the fifth point of the game drops in for Madison Jones. Considered to be the best on-ball defender on the team, according to Danny Manning. And Jones last year, 39 steals that led the team. In high school, he had over 1,000 points at Ravenscroft mm -hmm. and over 400 assists. And misses that free throw and a over-the-back foul called on Wake Forest. And UNC Asheville hanging around, down five. I told you the best conference record in the Big South the last seven years. They've gone 78 and 40 in conference games since the 2007-8 season. I happened to call the championship last year for the Big South. Coastal Carolina beating Winthrop. Cliff Ellis took his fourth team to the NCAA tournament in his career. Outstanding job by Coach Ellis. And Rousey goes to the left hand and short on the jumper inside. Rebound by Mideglou for Wake Forest. Yeah, I'm not sure Rousey should go, try to go to the rim against a set defense. When he gets that deep, he's got to think about kicking it out. But that shows you the self-confidence that young man has in himself. Here's Wilbekin, had the ball knocked away, and guess who's got it? Rousey again, that's 17 turnovers on Wake. I like this decision. Doesn't have numbers, doesn't have an advantage. Pulls it out, spreads the floor, causes a foul. And a hand check foul called on Wake Forest. It's on Mitchell Wilbekin, that's his first. You know, Rousey's a tough guy to defend. You get too close, he goes by you. If you give him a little space, he's gonna pull the shot. I think the goal is to defend him with a bigger defender, make him shoot over the top, and force him into any and all ball screens. Chase him off of screens. And another hand check foul called on Wake Forest as Little John draws the contact on the drive of the baseline. Approaching 12 minutes left to go in this one and UNC Asheville hanging around with the ball down five. They're spacing the floor. If Rousey's not open. It's basically a four-on-four -four game. Traveling on Sam Hughes. He took a bunny hop, moved the pivot feet, and that's the 11th turnover on the Bulldogs tonight. Let's see if they go back to the zone. 
or stick with the man-to-man. -man. They're going to stay man. And another turnover. Unforced error by Wake Forest off the hands of Miller McIntyre. Number 18 on the night for the Demon Deacons. Timeout taken, 11.57 to go. Here in Winston-Salem, Wake Forest leads at home by five points. Wake Forest with the lead by five at home. Opening night of college basketball here in Winston-Salem, North Carolina, the Lawrence Joel Coliseum. And Paul Biancardi, you are the recruiting expert, and you have a pretty high mark for Danny Manning's recruiting class coming in next year. Yes, his first full class without coaching a game. He gets an ESPN top 100 player in Doral Moore, a seven-footer who can score with touch facing the basket, a true center. He'll be a shot blocker for Danny Manning. Brian Crawford, the point guard out of Gonzaga High School in Washington, D.C. He's a borderline top 100 guy. He'll be a leader and challenge Madison Jones for that point guard position. And I like John Collins, a four-star guy, rugged power forward. Danny Manning identifying the needs of the program and really doing an outstanding job with his first class. Now also for the class of 216, he's all over one of the best players in the nation, Harry Giles. They already have Brandon Childress, Randolph Childress's son. Randolph Childress, an assistant coach at Wake Forest, a great shooter in his day. His son Brandon Childress can really stroke it. Danny Manning trying to make strides and inroads. That's how you build your team, Brock. Mittiglou got inside position, but another turnover on Wake Forest, number 19 in the game. Rousey, and he puts up a three, fouled in the act of shooting on a three-point shot. He'll get three free throws. Yeah, I mentioned this earlier in the broadcast. You're going to see the shot fake sooner or later. Right there, the ball goes up. His body stays down. The defender bites on it. And Rousey's smart enough, clever enough to jump into the airborne defender. But getting back to recruiting for a second, you know, in college basketball, one or two special players, you can turn your program around. And that's what Danny Manning is on the verge of doing by getting Doral Moore and Brian Crawford, John Collins. He needs to have a strong 216 class. Then he can push Wake Forest, you know, up into that upper echelon of that deep sea in the ACC. It's, what's it, 50 teams? Feels like 50, there's 15. 15. And right now they're near the bottom. There's no question about it. I think Virginia Tech, Boston College, and Wake Forest are at the bottom. It's a top heavy ACC league this year. Reminds me of the old Big East. Not old Big East, but in 211 where they had so many dominant teams at the top. Then there's a bunch of teams in the middle like Georgia Tech, Florida State, Clemson. You just don't know what they're gonna do. Well, Rousey makes all three free throws and cuts it down to a two-point game. Did you notice Rousey shot that ball with the left hand? He's a right-hander, shot it with the left hand, but he got the guy in 
the air and drew the contact. Very smart play by Andrew Rousey. Miller McIntyre has his pocket picked. Rousey's got it now. Another turnover on Wake, number 20. Asheville with a chance to tie the game or take the lead with a tray. Rousey was responsible for that steal. Nice hedge. You can't let him turn the corner. Little John with the left hand too high off the glass. Try to get his own rebound. He's trying to call a timeout. Instead, a jump ball is called. A possession arrow goes back over to Wake Forest. Outstanding hustle by Little John. 22 in the blue. He's getting on the floor, sacrificing his body for the good of the team. Well, Danny Manning talked about this team before the game today. This team, UNC Asheville, very scrappy, lots of energy. They play hard. And they're playing hard and smart and riding on the shoulders of 5'10 sophomore Andrew Rousey. 26 points in the game, 20 in the first half. Last year, an 83% free throw shooter averaged 20 points per game. That led the Big South Conference and second among freshmen last year in all of NCAA Division I. And a hand check foul called on at UNC Asheville, and Wake will go to the line for a one and one. Each team in the bonus right now. And if you're Wake Forest, you want to look for Devin Thomas before you do anything on offense. A simple touch can create a basket. Jones cans the free throw. Wake Forest now 21 of 30 at the line. Jones has six points. Give him seven. And the lead is back up to four for Wake Forest, nearing the midway point of the second half of the Joel Coliseum. This has been a sloppy game. We have over 30 turnovers between each team with 10 minutes to go. As expected, first game of the season. Sam Hughes lines up a three, missing, tap try, missed, and Jaleel Roberts, he can't get it to fall, and the rebound of Midiglu for Wake Forest. Three opportunities there for Asheville, they just couldn't get it to go down. A great effort by Asheville on the glass. Wake Forest got lucky. The foul away from the ball, it's on Andrew Rousey, about the only thing he's done wrong tonight. <laughs> That's his second personal foul, a foul away from the basketball. On Rousey, 10 team fouls, and now Wake will go to the line for a double bonus the rest of the way. And Devin Thomas at the line, 17 points on the night. Flirting with another double double. Give him 18, and Wake continues to go to the line and make foul shots as Roberts goes out. And Giacomo Zilli, number 21, comes in. Thomas makes them both. He has 19 points in the game. You know, Rousey played the entire first half, Brock. I don't think he's going to take him out in the second half. Yeah, I don't think he's come out in the second half either. He doesn't look tired. He doesn't. He's one of those guys you look at in the gym and he... You know, he's got winners, and he's on the court all day long. Venata fouled, wave off the shot, hand check on the floor. It's on Wake Forest. One-on-one on one free throws Vanetta coming up for Venata of UNC Asheville. Down six, 9.39 to go. You know, because Asheville shoots the basketball pretty well from the outside, and then you got Rousey. The defense has to extend at least to the arc. That opens up driving lines and post-ups for the other players. Asheville missing on that free throw. 11 of 13 now the Bulldogs are tonight. At the free throw line, Wake with the ball, leading by six. Midiglu, he'll take the long three, and that rims out. Rebound, Thomas, he has a double-double now, and he is fouled on the way up, and he'll go to the line for some more free throws. You know, I watched Devin Thomas on the flight of that shot. If you watch Devin Thomas on the flight of the shot, 
you just can't move him. He's got a strong lower base. Look at how strong his hands and arms are. Once he catches that basketball, he keeps it close to his body. He lets the opponent follow him. But he's got a strong set of hips, legs, and he keeps his feet moving in the post. Yeah, he jockeys for that offensive position to get the rebound. So Nick McDevitt's team hanging in there, only down six on the road. Season opener for both teams. A tobacco road battle. 9-12 to go. But Devin Thomas going to the line to try and extend the Wake Forest lead. It's at six right now. He's been making the majority of his free throws so far here tonight. Kim Ubaru comes in for Giacomo Zilli of UNC Asheville. Wake Forest led by five at the break, 37 to 32. I know Coach McDevitt isn't a zone guy, but when he played his zone tonight, it seemed to help in terms of Devin Thomas not getting the touches he gets against the man-to-man. -man. Let's see if he goes back to that down the stretch. I like the zone for Asheville. I like the way he mixes it in. Perhaps fatigue, a factor on those free throws by Thomas. He left them both short. Asheville with the ball, down six. Ibaru, reverse layup, inside, he scores. Devin Thomas never, never moved his feet in the post. Nice move by Ibaru. That's his first bucket of the game. He has four points on the night, and the lead is down to four. Wilbekin, open for three. His first points of the night, and the lead is up to seven. Wake Forest leads it 56-49. The Wilbekins make big shots, huh? <laughs> Scotty and Mitchell. The Wilbekin boys do make big shots. That was a big shot. They look a lot alike, almost like, almost identical. Scotty, of course, led the Gators to the Final Four last year, the SEC Player of the Year, also first team All-SEC. Rousey, tough shot, too strong, and Thomas, the rebound for Wake. Yeah, Wake made that a tough shot. Miller McIntyre floats it up in the lane. Mittaglue the rebound, and the putback is good. He has 11, and the lead is 9 for Wake at 58-49. Timeout, Nick McDevitt and UNC Asheville. Wake Forest to extend the lead to nine at 58-49. Nick McDevitt trying to stop the run, stop the momentum, calls a 30-second timeout. Well, Coach McDevitt knows that second chance points would hurt his team. Dino Smitoglu on the glass, working hard. You know, he's not strong, still has a ways to go in the strength and conditioning field. But you love his effort. And his tenacity on the glass is the jump shot by Wilbur Kid. Second chance points. Middaglue tap tap to himself and puts it in. They're watching back in Greece. <laughs> now, Danny Manning said not only is he a, a smart basketball player, also a good student, really conscientious about his schoolwork and his grades. And, guy that comes over from Greece, already has some international experience, brings a pro-minded approach to this college game. He brings offense, that's what he brings. Nice job on the glass. And now he's getting in a stance. If he can learn how to play low, the physicality of the game and the speed of the game, once he catches up to that, it'll be a big help to Wake Forest. Rousey lost it, turns it over. Here comes Thomas up the floor, and he lost it on the way up, but he got fouled on the way up. And he'll have two foul shots when we come back after the break. Timeout taken on the floor, 7.34. Remaining in the game in Winston-Salem, it's Wake Forest at home leading by nine. It's only against the law if you get caught.
Wake Forest up its lead now to 9, 58-49 at the 7.34 mark remaining in the second half. And the Demon Deacons getting the job done on defense, creating some offense. Anytime Andrew Rousey, 15 in the blue, has the basketball. See, they force him into the ball screen. Freeze it right there. You have three defenders. Anytime he tries to go too deep, let it go. There's six hands around him right now. And this is what Coach McDevitt did not want. The live ball turnover. It puts Wake Forest to the line. And the possession before that, Brock, Dinos Mittaglou on the offensive glass with second chance points. Those were the two keys to the game, Coach McDevitt felt. Wake Forest capitalizing in those areas right now. Wake Forest 24 of 35 at the free throw line and Thomas, after missing two in a row, knocks in that free throw and Thomas now has 20 points on the night. Wake Forest has attempted Two more free throws than field goals tonight. You can win a lot of games if you can convert from the line. Thomas now has 21 points. The lead is 11. That's the biggest lead of the game for Wake Forest. Wake has never trailed in the contest tonight. Near turnover by Rousey. Here's Ubarro down the lane. Missing on the layup try and Hudson on the rebound for Wake Forest. Got fouled from behind, hits the deck hard. Bounces right back up. He'll be fine. He'll go to the line for two bonus free throws. With seven minutes to go, Wake Forest with a lot of energy on defense, converting to offense. Hudson in the open floor. The staff loves this young man. I see a lot of promise in him. 6'6", with versatility, the ability to grab a defensive rebound and break out. That's a hard, fast break to stop. He's older for his class, Hudson is. He turns 21 years old in December. He's a freshman, played one year of prep ball in 2013-14. He's actually the brother of San Francisco 49ers wide receiver Michael Crabtree. Yeah, out of Mount Zion Academy here in North Carolina. Yeah. As you mentioned, 21-year-old freshman, ready to help. Out of Dallas, Texas, had a three-pointer made in the first half. He had 11 points last week in the exhibition game against Young Harris. And knocks home his fourth point of the night. Wake Forest last year in this building went 14 and four. On the road, it was a different story. The team went just one and nine on true road games last year. You know, Wake Forest, against the other North Carolina teams, North Carolina State, North Carolina and Duke, they split it three and three. The problem was after they'd win a big game, they would lose games big after that. Never had that consistency last year. Jeff Bezdilic was trying to turn the corner with a sophomore leading group. Yeah, Danny Manning taking over for Jeff Bezdelic, who Spent four years here in Winston-Salem. Went 51 and 76. 17 and 16 a year ago, but things just weren't going as well as the administration at Wake Forest had wanted. And now things have been going. They get Danny Manning from Tulsa. How about Danny Manning? We'll talk about taking some good notes. He played for Larry Brown. Played for Jerry Sloan, another Hall of Fame coach in the Utah Jazz. Coached under Bill Self at Kansas. Who will be a Hall of Fame coach, in my a, opinion. He will be a Hall of Fame coach yep. someday. And he said his most influential person in his basketball life with his father was his father, Ed Manning, who was a good college and pro player. And he taught Danny a thing or two about basketball growing up. In fact, he said that the three biggest influences in his basketball life were his dad, Larry Brown, and Bill Self. Thomas inside for the two-hand jam. He's putting on a clinic on how to post up Devin Thomas. Young big guys, or any players out there, make a highlight tape of Devin Thomas posting up. Yubaru. He'll go to the line for two. How about Devin Thomas? muscling it up inside for a big two-hand jam. Well, look at the way he makes contact with his defender, maintains it, 
holds his ground. Tremendous hands to catch bad passes. Then he gets angles to the basket. Asheville has gambled a lot trying to go around the top or come underneath the bottom. And once you gamble on a good post player and give him an angle, it's an easy two points. But getting back to Wake Forest, Brock, counting the late Skip Prosser, who really had this place going on. And Dino Gaudio got this team to the NCAA tournament and then was let go. Coach Bezdilic was hired, and I believe his team, his program was making progress, just not fast enough for the fans at Wake Forest. Now Danny Manning gets a chance. Will the administration give him time to get the job done? That's my question. Near steal by Robertson for Asheville. It'll stay with Wake Forest with 19 to shoot. Because if you're gonna build a program when you're at the bottom of the ACC, it's not gonna take three or four years. No, you need about six to eight years. And if you don't believe so, then I'm not quite sure what you're doing in college athletics. Because by the time you go out and recruit, develop those players, don't forget other teams in your league are doing the same thing. And the ACC is getting a lot of top 100 players. I believe Danny Manning is the perfect guy for this job. He just needs the time to get the job done. And he can't be afraid to look over his shoulder. Well, he's 6-0-2 away from career win number one at Wake Forest as Devin Thomas puts home another basket. He has 25 points in the game, and the lead is 13 for Wake. Yubaru, power step, and he's fouled by Leonard. Either Leonard or Thomas got him. They give it to Leonard, and that's his second foul of the game. Nashville not going away. Nice power move, step through. Defense a little late. Yubaru, strong, physical, athletic. They don't get a lot of points using NC Asheville out of the center position. Coach McDevitt told me if he can get 15 and 10 between his three-headed monster, Zeely, Yubaru, and Roberts. That's a good night. One out of two for Yubaru. And time becoming a factor for UNC Asheville now. Asheville got it down to two points earlier in this half, but Wake Forest using its athleticism and talent to stretch out the lead. It's now 12, 66-54 with five and a half minutes remaining. I'd love to see that as a coach. Player on your team goes down. The other four guys race to help pick him up. That's unity. That shows me that this Asheville team is close and connected. Miles Overton open for three. This is badly on that one too strong. Thomas the rebound into Leonard inside. He scores. Six points for Leonard and a 14 point lead for Wake Forest. It's biggest lead of the night. Impressed with the hustle by Thomas, but how about the wherewithal to make the pass. Rousey finds Yubaru, slips inside and a blocking foul called on Overton of Wake Forest. There's Rousey. Finds Yubaru wide open in the middle. Defense got to come over. A lot earlier than that, you're going to be in good health position. The free throws were going down in the first half for UNC Asheville. Not so much here down the stretch with 5.05 remaining. Now in for the Deacons, number 11, Greg McClinton. He replaces Darius Leonard. How about the new uh, teams into the ACC this year? with Louisville coming in from the American Conference over into the ACC. And then, of course, last year, Notre Dame came in, Syracuse came in, Pitt came in. Keep going. <laughs> Again, I believe it's Mar a top-heavy league, though. Maryland leaves and goes See. to the Big Ten. <laughs> Getting all this straightened out? You got it figured out in your head? <laughs> I think Louisville, Virginia, North Carolina, and Duke will battle for the top four spots. I think Florida State, Georgia Tech, 
Pitt, Notre Dame, Clemson, right in that middle slot. You know, you could get six or seven teams from the ACC this year in the NCAA tournament because every win in this league, or just about every win, will be a high quality win. Here's Little John directing traffic for UNC Asheville. Little John, floater in the lane, bounces out. Out of bounds off of Wake and a new shot clock for UNCA. Thought Greg McClinton that time did a nice job of stepping in, but he didn't want to take the charge. He kind of pulled out of the charge, which left Asheville time and space to get the ball back and have another opportunity here. New shot clock. Anytime you have Andrew Rousey, you got plenty of time. No lead is safe. Yubaru got the step inside. Nice reverse layup off the glass. Wow, he drops it in for two. And I think Coach McDevitt is finding out tonight that he's got a developing post player in Yubaru. Kicked ball by Little John. It'll stay with Wake Forest. There's Nick McDevitt coaching up his troops, trying to fight their way for the last 4-12. It was a two-point game at 49-47. And then after that, a 19-8 run by Wake to break it open by 11 points right now, 68-57. Well, he knows he's got the best perimeter scorer in the game in Andrew Rousey. Got to get him some touches here down the stretch. First, you got to make some stops. McClinton, nicely done. Down the lane, the finger roll, and McClinton has his first two points of the game. Medical red shirt last year from a torn ACL. He can really help this Demon Deacon team this year. A productive, athletic wing. Nada got fouled by Mittaglu. Mittaglu's fourth. And we get a timeout taken on the floor. 332 remaining in Winston Salem. Danny Manning, 332 away from his first win at Wake Forest. Back in Winston-Salem for the final 332. Brock Bowling alongside ESPN's Paul Biancardi. 70 to 57, Wake Forest with a lead of 13. And Wake Forest starting to pull away here, Paul, and uh, getting it done on both ends of the floor. And how about the hustle plays by Wake Forest to get a good basket. Look at Devin Thomas getting down and dirty. Loose ball. And then he gets the wherewithal to make the assist. 
to his teammate, Darius Leonard. Leonard saying, thank you, Mr. Thomas. And you know, Paul, you gotta wonder how good this team will be whenever Daniel Green gets medically cleared to play. The guy has had to sit out the last two seasons for Wake Forest due to a nagging knee injury, tore an ACL, and sat out 2013, and then tore the same ACL, re-injured it in a July workout to miss all of 13, 14, and not quite medically ready to play, but getting close, and hopefully he can finish off his career on a good note. Well, there's more depth this year at Wake Forest. Darius Leonard, fifth year senior from Campbell. He'll provide some solid minutes. Mitchell Wilberkin at the point guard position. Aaron Roundtree, an upperclassman. I really like Cornelius Hudson, 6'6 athlete from Dallas. And then you have McClinton back from an injury. Shot blocked away as Robertson had it blocked out of bounds by Jones, but a foul on Jones, and Robertson will go to the line and shoot two. 22nd turnover in the game on Wake Forest. This is the fast break. This is the block. Miller McIntyre with some ups. I've been impressed with Wake Forest and their effort, but also their defense. You know, they've been late on some rotations. They got beat off the dribble. That stuff will get cleaned up. But they know where to go on the floor. They understand or are understanding their defensive coverages. And I love the way Danny Manning addresses detail in his practice and shoot arounds. The kids are buying and they're learning. People told me last week that Danny Manning is so good at paying attention to detail. He pays attention to detail to the nth degree. Hudson for three. The rebound by Little John for UNC Asheville. Robertson in transition, fires up a three and it goes in. His second three of the night, he has eight points. It's down to a six point game, Paul, with 2.56 remaining. Love, I love what Coach McDevitt did for Asheville. Started trapping Wake Forest. They shot quick, they missed. So what does Asheville do? They come down to conversion. David Robertson knocks it down. Last year he shot 35% behind the arc. Scouting report says he's a shooter. Got to find him in transition. If Asheville's going to trap and press, if you wake for us, don't shoot threes. Attack the pressure, try to get layups. Wake Forest leads the all-time series, 7 to nothing over UNC Asheville. Asheville was hanging around in the first half, thanks to 20 first half points by Andrew Rousey, the sophomore sharp shooter. Rousey a little quieter in the second half. He has only six points since the break, but it's a six-point game, and UNC Asheville is right back in it. It's a 1-2-2, two, two, three-quarter court, soft trap. Supposed to keep the ball out of the middle. Middleglue throws it down. And Wake Forest did a great job of getting the ball to the middle, throwing opposite, and getting that layup I just talked about. Robertson can't hit that three out of bounds over to Wake Forest. And just like that, a six point lead goes to eight on a dunk by Middleglue, his 13th point of the night. Danny Manning was working on press offense today. Good thing he was working on it because they needed to understand what spots to go to and where to get the ball to. Anytime you get time pressured, out. you want to get the ball to the middle of the floor. Yeah, timeout, Danny Manning. And then, there's something about Danny Manning, Paul. He nearly scored, almost scored 3,000 points in his collegiate career at Kansas, 2,951. Two of those years, he did not have the three-point line. He did have the three-point line for his junior and senior seasons, but he didn't take very many threes because he was a four-man and a five-man at Kansas. So think about that, nearly 3,000 points as primarily a big guy. A couple of more games, he could have had 3,000 and he would have joined an elite group of 3,000 point scorers in the history of NCAA basketball. 
Danny Manning is certainly one of the most accomplished players in the college game. And a lot of people will tell you that know Danny very well. He's a very humble human being. Yeah, doesn't like to talk about himself, doesn't like to talk about his accolades. Uh, he enjoys talking about the team that won the national title in 1988, but he cringes when they call it Danny and the Miracles because he feels like it takes away from the team that they were. Mittaglu hits the outside shot from 17 feet away. He's going to be a weapon this year for Wake Forest. He has 15, and all of a sudden the lead is back up to double digits at 10. Sam Hughes for three, and he knocks it in from outside, and Hughes has his eighth point of the game, all coming in the second half. Two three-pointers on the night for Hughes, cuts it down to seven. That was almost a backcourt violation on Miller McIntyre. Offensive foul called on Miller McIntyre. His third foul of the game, and they go back the other way. Just going a little too fast right now. He wants to break the count. Now here's where he hesitates. A little out of control. He's got to avoid that defender. Maybe with a Euro step or a jump stop. <laughs> you got to change your speed as you attack the basket to throw the defense off balance. 90 seconds remaining. Robertson fires up another three, got fouled on the three, and he'll get three free throws. Clock stops, and he'll go to the line to try and cut into that lead some more. He can cut it down to four if he makes all three. Let's see what Robinson does to get the foul. Nothing, no shot fake. McClinton, redshirt freshman, what he did, his momentum carried him into the shooter. If he jumped straight up and down with his hands up, it wouldn't have been a foul. That's something Coach Manning, I'm sure, will show him on the film. And you practice that when you practice your closeouts, being under control and still contesting the shot. Robertson, a 65% free throw shooter a year ago, misses the first of three. Shot number two coming up. Now, Wake Forest is not a good free throw shooting team if you coach McDevitt. Do you man-to-man -man right here? Try to get a steal and then foul on the inbounds. Devin Thomas, not a good free throw shooter. I would not foul Mittaglou at all, young man from Greece. Maybe Madison Jones, but I try fouling. Two out of three for Robertson, cuts it down to a five point game with a minute 18 to go and a near steal and a foul called on Asheville. You're better off because if that foul wasn't called, that would have been a layup. Good pressure, soft pressure, just trying to make Wake Forest turn it over. They do, they get it back, but they fouled. I like the foul. Let's see if freshman Hudson can make it. That's the 40th foul shot attempted tonight by Wake Forest. Make it 41. As Wake Forest now extends the lead back up to 7, 76-69 with a minute 14 to go. Cornelius Hudson, 25. He's earned some playing time for the next game, that's for sure. Freshman with a good job from Dallas. Rousey's three, blocked by Mittaglou, the seven-footer, and Miller McIntyre has it for Wake. All the way inside and can't get it to fall, but the putback is good by Jones. Nine-point game. Robertson misses the floater, and Mittaglou claims the rebound for Wake, and he's fouled with 43 seconds remaining, and the crowd sensing a W here tonight at the Joel Coliseum. See Wake Forest right now, Miller McIntyre with his head up and his eyes up, attacking the rim. Nice job by Madison Jones with the follow. You know, Mittaglou is not big. I'm sorry, he's not strong, but he is tall. And it's been hard for Asheville to score over him tonight. 
Now he's going to have to gain some girth between now and ACC play to be a factor in games. Bidigu cans them both. He has 17 points in the game. And he'll come out of the game. The 18 year old from Greece. 17 points in his debut as a Wake Forest Demon Deacon, approaching 30 seconds remaining, and Wake leads it by 11. Rousey along two. Thomas rebounds over the back foul called on Ubaru of Asheville. That's his fourth. The defense on Andrew Rousey in the last couple of minutes of this game has been better. And when he's found his open teammates, Asheville, they couldn't score at the rim against the taller Wake Forest team. You see Coach McDevitt thinking about how he can make up 11 points in 25 seconds. That may not happen tonight. But this young coach is doing a tremendous job with his Bulldog team. They're going to be a factor in the Big South, no question about it. Now the most successful Big South team Record-wise, the last seven years, 78 and 40 record. Head coach Eddie Beatenbaugh is the head man of that team, and Coach McDevitt was his assistant all those years. Made a good team, won a lot of games. Just glad to see the administration give the job to Coach McDevitt. He's the right guy for this Asheville job. Final 20 seconds. Rousey fires up a three. McClinton the rebound inside of 10 seconds to go and Coach McDevitt says don't foul. Wake Forest will run off the clock. And new head coach Danny Manning with career win number one on opening night. Here at Wake Forest, his first ever Wake Forest career win comes on opening night. And career win overall, number 39 for Danny Manning as Wake Forest wins it 80 to 69. Danny Manning talked about playing an up-tempo style of basketball on the offensive end. His team put up 80 points tonight. He's got to clean up, clean up the turnovers, some defensive rotations. They did an outstanding job getting to the free throw line. I thought that was the difference in this game tonight. So Wake wins it to go to 1-0 on the season, and UNC Asheville drops to 0-1. So for Paul Biancardi and the entire ESPN3 crew, Brock Bowling saying so long from Winston-Salem, the final score. Wake Forest 80, UNC Asheville 69. To watch this entire game on replay, as well as other games on the family of ESPN networks, log on to watchespn.com or download the Watch ESPN app. Thanks for watching. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. Good night from the Lawrence Joel Coliseum.